Some good news to report on nearly all fronts. Perch patterns have been working really well. This week's buzz bite report. This week's snapping it off the bottom. Auto chart live. You've got fish doing a number of different things. See a lot of them? Oh, yeah! They are heavy. Look at this giant. How's that? Today, it's all about finding fish and red hot bites from all around the upper Midwest. This is Angley Buzz TV. I'm Dave Sanda. And I'm Troy Lindner. And later in the show, our BuzzBite reporters in the field will join us with their fishing updates from their local waters. And today we're talking about finding fish, and I think that's the most important factor for catching them. You got to be on them to catch them. If you're, not, if you're not around the fish, you can be throwing the best baits, the best lures, but simply locating the fish, finding them is extremely important. And fortunately, we have a lot of different tools at our disposal to solve this Rubik's Cube type puzzles with all these different variables. Let's take a quick look at some of the factors that are involved when it comes to finding fish. The challenge is that even good fishing spots aren't good all of the time. So just because you find underwater structure like points, humps and drop offs, it doesn't necessarily mean that active biters are present. Look at it this way. Good spots provide good seasonal habitat, like the proper depth and bottom content for spawning. In spring, bass instinctively spawn on softer bottom while walleye spawn atop rocks. So right from the get-go, spring bass and walleye spots usually aren't one and the same. Once fish are done spawning, fish instinctively shift their emphasis from reproduction to eating. As they do this, they make seasonal movements to the best feeding and living areas available. In some cases, bass and walleye summer habitat overlaps. On other waters, they may be totally separate. So it all depends upon what the local lake, river, or reservoir offers for potential fish use. Most of the time, we're actually looking for seasonal spots that temporarily provide good combinations of habitat and forage, which in turn attract our target species of fish. Lush weed beds, for instance, generally attract panfish, largemouths, pike, or muskies during summer. That's their basic nature. Smallmouths and walleyes, by comparison, are more apt to use sand and rock structures in deeper water. In doing so, they simultaneously avoid competition with other species that prefer shallower habitat or heavier cover. In shallow water, polarized sunglasses are invaluable for locating fish holding structure and cover. The deeper you fish, however, the more electronics come into play. Modern electronics reveal an amazing amount of information and detail, like depth, cover, the presence or absence of fish and forage, what's directly beneath your boat, and even out to the sides. On-screen lake maps detail prime underwater structures where fish may gather, including key features and spots where they're likely to cluster. Used properly, they can help you catch more and bigger fish of every species that swims, quickly and efficiently. Speaking of species, in the upper Midwest, we're blessed with many different species of game fish to catch. Understanding each species, including their preferred seasonal locations, will help you put more and bigger fish in the boat all year long. Beautiful fish, Mike. And understanding these seasonal locations is extremely important, especially after the spawn. The fish are really hungry, they wanna fatten up, mm -hmm. they're gonna be chasing the food. Absolutely, but you know what? What's, what's more important than structure fishing or anything is like you said, food and seasonal needs. The biggest mistake people make is they go out and they say, well, I fished points or I fished humps, it was beautiful structure. I didn't catch any fish. How yeah. come? It doesn't make any sense. You know what? Fish don't care about that stuff unless there's food there in the first place, yeah. food or cover to bring mm -hmm. them there. It fulfills their seasonal needs. And the better that you can figure out what they require, the more likely you are to find them and catch them. Mm -hmm. And right now, that brings us to our Angling Buzz news for this week. Walleye Weekend is happening June 10th through 12th at Lakeside Park in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Now this is a really big event. It's a family-friendly festival with live music stages, attractions, sporting events, and lots of great food and drinks. And the best part, Admission is free. Earlier this spring, a 25 pound big head carp was caught by a commercial fisherman on the Minnesota River. Both big head and silver carp compete with native species and pose a threat to rivers and lakes. Invasive carp captures must be reported to the DNR immediately. 
It's free fishing time in Michigan this weekend, June 11th and 12th. Now this happens twice a year. Residents and out of state visitors can enjoy fishing on both inland and Great Lakes waters for all species. Take a Kid Fishing Weekend is happening in Minnesota June 10th through the 12th. Minnesota adults who take a child 15 years old or younger fishing don't need a license that weekend. Now this is a wonderful opportunity to introduce young people to the great world of fishing. Hey, thanks Troy for that great news. Coming up next, we're going to go to our highlight destination which features the state of Michigan. And after that, we'll be joined by the first of our BuzzBite reporters in the field as Angley Buzz continues. Running in rough water can be a pain, literally. Hey, I never knew how comfortable a ride could be. Until I added smooth moves to my boat. It's four spring design with hydraulic shock. Can smooth even the roughest of rides. With the built-in slide and swivel, you maintain all the function of your existing seat. A turn of the handle, adjust for conditions and passenger weight. Hey, it's easy to install and built to last. Smooth moves, your back will thank you. I know mine does. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. Welcome back to Angling Buzz, and now it's time for our featured destination, Michigan, which we both have fished. I know you fish there a lot, and it's quite an amazing place with the coastline. From what I understand, it has as much coastline besides Alaska as anywhere in the United States and more registered boaters right. than any other state. Absolutely. It's a great place to go fishing, and you've got a real variety of waters there. You not only have all of the inland natural lakes and rivers, but you've got all the harbors and the river mouths where it interfaces with the salmonid fisheries of the fish that are suspended out in the big water and there's really something for everybody out there. Let's take a quick trip over to Waterworld, which is the state of Michigan. The state is surrounded on nearly all sides by water and it has a good amount of additional lakes and rivers lying within its aquatic perimeter. Bays, harbors, rivers, connected lakes, shorelines, offshore structure, and deep pristine basins provide an immense and diverse variety of habitat for cold, cool, and warm water fish species. Whether you prefer fishing offshore, inshore, or inland, Michigan offers an amazing array of angling options. Get in there! That's a photo if I've ever seen it. First off, there's the cold water fishery for trout and salmon in Lakes Superior, Michigan, and Huron. Offshore trollers probe the vast open expanse from the surface to the depths in search of steelhead, salmon, and trout. Most of these species also make seasonal, spring or fall spawning runs up tributary rivers, providing anglers with up close and personal opportunities for going toe to toe with giants. <laughs> Many of these same streams are year-round homes to smallmouth bass and at least seasonal migrations of monstrous walleyes from the surrounding big water. That's more like it. It just got heavy and now it's real heavy. Out in the bays, these same populations spend the rest of the year growing to staggering proportions. From Traverse Bay to Saginaw Bay and from Lake St. Clair to Lake Erie, some of the largest smallmouth bass and walleyes on the planet call Michigan waters home. Toss in localized populations of huge northern pike, slab crappies, big bluegills, jumbo perch, scenic trout streams, and more, 
and you just can't beat the Wolverine State for fishing action and excitement. You'll find water here, there, and everywhere. Most of it with giants lurking just beneath the surface. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was awesome. For more information on Michigan's fantastic fishing opportunities, go to sportfishmichigan.com. Get out, get bit. He's going nuts. Bananas. Whoa. Easy now. Well, Michigan has some incredible fishing. I've been out there for some of the muskies and some of the smallmouth. Mm -hmm. I love fishing around. I like the, like the waterways like Detroit River, the Huron, and then St. Clair, everything that St. Clair has to offer. I mean, it's, you have little water, you have big water, and all the streams, creeks, rivers in between. Yeah, you're talking the, the big waters. When I was a kid, I used to go fishing with my family, fishing small streams there for smallmouth bass and for northern pike. And later, as I got into my 20s, my buddies and I would run up into the Upper Peninsula and we got on some really big, big fish. I'm talking smallies pushing seven, walleyes pushing 16 pounds, pike over 20. I mean, where else can you do that? And the thing is, it's often within easy drive of metropolitan areas. Yeah, that's truly some amazing, you're talking the size of the pike and smallmouth that you're getting. I'm a little jealous. And right now, I think I got to bring it to our Buzz Bite reporters in the field to hear what's happening in their waters. Our first buzz bite report is from Chad Schilling on Lake Oahe in South Dakota. The bite is really good here at home. We are uh, catching a lot of fish in that 16 to 18 inch range, getting a few overs. Um, can about go catch them any way you want right now. Uh, crappies, huge northerns, just had a 20 pound northern come in again yesterday. Smallmouth bass, white bass, catfish, everything is biting, but the walleyes are really on the bite. So. Uh, last two days, been out, um, really did well at huge winds, 30 to 35 mile an hour winds. We uh, pulled bottom bouncers with propeller rigs, just regular spinners, smiley blades, um, running a one ounce bouncer, um, keeping in that six to 15 feet of water. And really it doesn't matter, that seems like 11 or 12 is what you focus on, but wandering and not catching them about everywhere. So everybody get here, it's time, bring your families, come to Hawaii, come to South Dakota, the bite's good. So. Have a good week. Next, let's check in with Peter Olson, who's fishing bottom bouncers on the Missouri River in North Dakota. In this Buzz Bite report, we're gonna talk about the importance of choosing the correct size bottom bouncer so you can catch more fish. A good rule of thumb is to use one ounce for every 10 feet of water you're fishing. Then, we increase weight by half ounce increments based on current or boat speed. When your bottom bouncer is too light, you're either nowhere near the bottom or just dragging it along. The key is to keep your line as vertical as possible so your bait is in the walleye strike zone. As far as the fishing is concerned, the river is pretty hot, Lake Audubon is worth the trip, and Sakakoya is just getting started. Stick around for more Buzz Bite reports as Angling Buzz continues. My dad was never too busy to take me fishing. It was our special time together. He taught me which lures to use, how to cast, how to land big fish. Some days were better than others. Now that I'm older, I treasure those memories of our time on the water and am glad that I can make new memories for my kids. Mills Fleet Farm, helping to create outdoor memories since 1955. Lake Winnebagashish, Big Winnie. Let's go back in time to a real up north vacation spot, a place where memories are made. Big Winnie is situated in the Chippewa National Forest and gateway to some of Minnesota's finest trophy walleye, pike, perch, untapped bass, and musky fishing. It's the perfect place for family and friends when you really want to get away. Go to lakewinnie.net to find our little piece of heaven. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. And apart from all the reports we're getting, largemouth bass fishing, which I've been doing a lot of in central Minnesota, is exceptional right now, especially around the docks, up shallow. The weeds aren't, aren't all over, so you can catch a lot of fish just throwing a little stick bait like a Senko around. Now, we live in the north country portion of Minnesota where it's uh, cool up here. Those farm country lakes out in western Minnesota in that Alex and Ottertail area are really warming up fast. 
We had some guys from our office recently go catch some really big bluegills out there, both top water fishing, believe it or not, and drop shotting. The walleye bite is really good on that Alex and Otter Tail area. And right now, let's join Mickey Johnson over at Mille Lacs Lake here in central Minnesota, where he's fly fishing for smallmouth bass. This is Mille Lacs. This is a beautiful little smallmouth. The smallmouth are right up on top in about five feet of water. You can have the opportunities with a nice big streamer. This white one worked out really well. Beautiful fish, beautiful time. The water's warming up and the fish are on the move. This is one of the reasons why you come to Mille Lacs. You look for those smallmouth this time of year. They're in shallow. They're working around different humps. You can't catch a chunk like this everywhere or every time but it's amazing the opportunity. and You don't get the opportunity unless you come on out. Our next report is from Jason Mitchell. Now he normally reports from North Dakota, but right now he's up on Lake Winnie in Northern Minnesota. I just love it up here. Classic Northwoods experience in the Chippewa National Forest. You just feel like you're in the in the Minnesota North, but uh, walleye fishing's been pretty good. You know, we caught a few perch, a few pike, rock bass, and you know, we caught a little bit of everything, but uh, walleye fishing has been impressive on Winnie, and uh, we've seen pretty decent fishing. You know, we were catching anywhere from 10 to 15 fish a day, really nice fish. The ticket for us is pulling just a, a gold spinner on a, on a small bullet weight, 16 pounds bullet weight, or even using a split shot, running along the, the sharp brake lines that come out, even out in front of High Banks Resort here over by Tamarack, you know, you get these big shallow sand flats where it's three feet, four feet, five feet, seven feet forever. Then you just get that lip, that just that drop off where it drops from say seven, nine feet of water down into 15 to 20 feet of water, right along that break where that junk weed and some of that cabbage is coming up, just pulling those spinners through there a mile and an hour or so. and. Uh, you know, tipping them with a shiner, that's been working really well. So people are also using a jig and a shiner, but uh, you know, these fish are scattered and you can just cover so much more water with that split shot and spinner or uh, bullet weight and spinner. And so cover some water, you know, follow the wind and uh, you know, you're gonna catch some fish on Lake Winnebagosh right now. Now let's check in with Billy Rosner up on the Northern Frontier at Lake Vermilion, Minnesota. Our water temperatures are in that 62 to 65 degree range which is pushing our bass out there in, making their bed, starting to think about doing their thing. The walleye bite continues to be very well, starting to switch over to a lot of uh, rigs, with leeches even now, and minnows. Uh, plastics are working, jigging wraps are working, pulling wraps are working, so pretty much you, you can try just about anything for the walleyes right now and you're gonna catch fish. The musky season, think small, I go with lighter rods. Seven foot St. Croix, this is one of my favorites here, this little Premier. I got a little 200 Lux on here with 60 pound braid. I like throwing these Rapala x wraps slash baits. They all work really well. And I really like throwing these bright blue fox bucktails for the muskies on Vermilion. Seems to be a great color and I can cover a lot of water with these. So just think light, the early part of the season, you should do fine. Have a great week, travel safe, and we'll talk to you next time. Our next report is from Jeff Evans over in Hayward, Wisconsin. As you can see, we've got a walleye bite going on right now in the Hayward Lakes area. The water temperatures in the mid 60s, 63 to 66 is what I've seen today. And the new weeds are starting to pop up in the shallows. And what that means is walleyes are gonna to gravitate to those weeds. And what we're using for presentation is a small weedless jig that's a 16th ounce weedless jig and we're just using a four inch sucker minnow tossing it into those weeds and then slowly working it back. We're also using a slip bobber presentation and setting that slip bobber about halfway down on the stained water lakes we're seeing weeds popping up in anywhere from six seven eight feet of water on the clear water lakes you're going to look at anywhere from 15 to 16 to 17 sometimes 18 feet of water as the lakes continue to warm and the weeds continue to grow it's just going to get better but come on up check it out it's a great bite and now let's check in with ben wolf our man in michigan June is a great month to be out on the water here in Michigan. We've got fantastic opportunities for almost every single species that someone would want to target. King and coho salmon fishing down in Muskegon is absolutely red hot right now. Both kings and cohos, they're gorging on freshwater shrimp right now. So anything they can get through that water column, right where those shrimp are holding, is gonna be the key to getting really, really nice catches throughout the day. In the Traverse City area, lake trout fishing is absolutely dynamite right now. We've got alewives that have moved into Grand Traverse Bay and the lake trout are responding accordingly. 
absolutely going on a feeding frenzy, eating these alewives that are ranging from two inches all the way up to four inches and even bigger. Fishing cowbells close to the bottom has been the ticket to getting these really, really nice lake trout catches. Bass fishing across the state remains really fantastic right now. For fly anglers, we're starting to see some really nice dry fly action up on top as we are seeing the first few big mayfly hatches of the year. For more information, or if you're looking for a captain or guide in the state of Michigan, please give Sportfish Michigan a call or check us out on the web, sportfishmichigan.com. And after this commercial break, we have our cool product segment and our technique of the week as angling buzz continues. Do yoga, do sunrise, do locally sourced, made from scratch. Do golf, do foot golf, mini golf, do soar, do jet, do cycle, paddle, beach comb, do chill, do vineyard, craft beer, do toast, do another toast, do hike, climb, do wow, do flip, do smile, do laugh, do fall in love, or maybe next year, do it all again tomorrow. Lake Mille Lacs, do the lake. High-tech construction, building with old world craftsmanship. Pride and passion, the same qualities that define high-tech construction go into every project we build. With meticulous attention to detail, our experienced tradesmen bring your floor plan to life. Our unwavering customer service results in a truly satisfying building experience. High-tech construction, where technology meets old world craftsmanship. Lake Vermilion, explore, relax, reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view, we got them. Lake Vermilion, four seasons of fun. And now it's time for our cool products this week, brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. And the theme here is finding fish and finding fish fast. Over here I have a variety of baits and they kind of all have something in common. They're bright, they're loud, and you can fish them extremely fast. Like a, like a spinner bait here for shallow water fishing, you can fish this in weeds around stumps. The colors on these are pretty loud. This is cotton candy from Terminator. I like this one for stained water, but again, you can fish it really quickly, a little bit deeper, I might go to a swim bait, something like the Storm Wild Eye, so I can fish this down at the edge of the weeds at the next kind of working stair step in my way out to deeper water. And there's different ways to rig this, like these you can put on a heavier head to get really deep, or you can read, uh, rig it with a, with a keel weight to uh, get kind of that middle depth. And even like these rocking shads, you get even louder like that. These rocking shads and these ripping wraps, well, you can count it down to about any depth you want. And again, long cast, fishing it fast bright, loud colors to get those, those active biters. And I had to include this in here. This is the X-Wrap by Rappel in the clown color. I throw a hot head and clown for two reasons. I can fish it fast, it's bright, it's loud, and fish bite it. And here, right here, fishing hotspot maps. These are old school. This is kind of, we have new school technology here. We're gonna, we're gonna go old school right here. I still have a box of big maps that I use. And what I like about these maps is it kind of gives me the big picture. If I'm in a hotel room or at home, I'm planning a fishing trip, I can open this up, I can look at the entire lake, and it helps me process everything. I maybe take a Sharpie and mark some areas. And then when I do get on the water, I go to my hummingbird unit, I go to that area and I break it down with their detailed mapping. This new electronic series from, uh, from Hummingbird, these Helix, are absolutely incredible. The down imaging, the side imaging, it lets you zero in. Once I find the areas here, I can go over there, I can side image, down image, use the sonar to find the spot on the spot areas. And when I do find that, sometimes I will throw out a buoy. I always have a buoy with, this is, this is a nice little camel colored one. This is the hot spot fishing marker buoy. I like this color a little bit because I don't always want people to see exactly where I'm fishing. And if you fish at night, the lighted marker buoy right here, this is, this is from Rapala, this is water activated. You throw it in the water, it lights up, and this is great for night fishing. So I have one for the day, 
and one for the night. And next up, I want to bring you our technique of the week for finding walleyes fast. And again, all these things are available at your local Fleet Farm store. You can also get them online at fleetfarm.com. One thing to know at this time of the year is the activity level of fish at different depths can change on a daily and hourly basis. Some fish up on the flats in the weeds could be very active early in the morning. Some fish out deep might be more active later in the day. And a fish on the edge, well, they're a wild card, but most of the time they're the most consistent. We like three different systems to find the most active fish at each level. Up on the flats, like in six to 10 foot of water, we love a simple VMC moon eye or a hot skirts jig rigged with a minnow on it or a boot tail shape. You can cast it up, rip it fast through the weeds to get the active biters fast. On the edge and down the break, we use the Rapala jigging wrap. I usually hold the boat in about 15 to 30 foot of water and cast up and work the thing down the break really fast. Troy will sit in the back and cover the deepest part of the water column. I'll keep my Minn Kota running at about 20 to 40 percent depending on the wind, just fast enough so Troy's line stays at a 45 degree angle. The third technique we employ is a rip and wrap. You can fish this lure up on a flat, down the break, or vertically in deep water. This bait has a ton of flash, sound, and vibration, and it works the best in dark or dingy water. When I use the jig or jigging wrap, I prefer to use a spinning rod. When I got to beef up and fish the rip and wrap, I switch to a bait casting. It's really that simple. You know, these are nice average fish in the heart of walleye country anywhere. Lakes, rivers, reservoirs. This is the, the fish that makes, a, makes everybody get excited that likes to catch a walleye. You know, looking back at that piece, we had a lot of fun. We caught a lot of fish when I was out there with my dad, and I like to fish fast. When I'm bass fishing, I like to fish fast, so it was really nice to fish fast for walleyes. Yeah, it still amazes me that the majority of walleye anglers today do not use any of these fast tactics that we just looked at. Most of them are live bait rigging or they're slow jigging, and they're just not triggering strikes, which is something you need to do a lot of the time when you're fishing the warm water period in summer. Hey, we're just about out of time for today. I'm Dave Sanda. And I'm Troy Linder. And be sure to check us out online on Facebook and Instagram, Angling Buzz, and visit your local Fleet Farm store for a chance to fish with us in the awesome Brainerd Lakes area. Next week, it's all about big water fishing for big fish. In the meantime, be sure to check us out on the web at anglingbuzz.com, see what our buzz bite reporters in the field have to say, and as I always like to say, they'll help you put more and bigger fish in the boat in the weeks ahead. This week's Buzz Bite Report. Charlie Moore. Brian Rolstock. Lee Talkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Black. Top water's been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bass like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. From Sturgeon Bay to Lake Sakakoya. Lake Superior. Madison, Wisconsin. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next week. <laughs>